So Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for what um, you have put on my heart to speak to the people, Lord. And I pray that everyone in some way is touched in some way by this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So the title of this message is called The Embrace. But before we get into The Embrace... I would like to know um, what you guys think the word accept means. So if you want a shout out from your seats, what does accept mean when you think of accept, when you accept something or someone? Go ahead, give me a, what you think accept means. Yeah. Not a trick question, I promise. To welcome. <laughs> to receive, okay. To welcome. To welcome, okay. Anyone else? Willing to deal with the situation. Willing to deal with the situation. All right. Okay. Now, how about the word embrace? What does embrace mean? Bring close and hold. Bring close and hold. Very good. Anyone else for embrace? What's that? Hug. That's a good embrace. Awesome. Hug. Love. love. Love is a form of embrace, absolutely. To, to build on that, to love and accept. To love uh, and accept. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of embrace, believe it or not, because I need it right now. So um, this is not what the whole message is about, but I'm, I'm giving you the explanation why. Um, after this happens. So Andrew, would you do me a favor and do what we do? Thank you. You're so you may be wondering what that was, why that took a while and everything. So I'm not going to get too deep into, because this message isn't all about me and what I go through, but um, I have panic attacks and um, I do take a, an, a, an anxiety med daily to slow release anxiety med. However, yesterday or the day before I ran out and I don't get my refill until Monday. So in coming up here, um, I was having a panic attack, <laughs> but what helps me get through my panic attack is that, believe it or not. So when Andrew comes up, he doesn't tell me, honey, it's going to be okay. He embraces me. And in that embrace, I feel calm, I feel love, and trust. And I can tell you, believe it or not, even though it was a few, only a few seconds, I feel a little better by that embrace. I wasn't expecting to do that example that soon <laughs> in the message, but here we go. So now, to dive into what the Oxford Dictionary say, to accept is to believe or come to recognize an opinion, explanation, etc., as valid or correct, or even to tolerate or submit to something unpleasant or undesired. On the other hand, to embrace is to accept a belief, theory, or change willingly and enthusiastically. So there is, in fact, a difference between acceptance and embrace. There is a difference. So there's two really good examples because embracing happens or should happen not just to another person, but to yourself to embrace. Okay. 
Remember, accepting is doing it because you may feel you have to, while embracing is doing it because you want to. You feel the difference? When you think of accept, we're gonna get into emotions for a second. When we think of accept, the emotion's cool. You know, the emotion that's associated with accept is cool. I'm accepted, that's pretty cool. I, I feel kinda, it feels good. But when you feel, hear the word embrace, you feel as a, like a warmth, a, a real belonging when you hear the word embrace. So an example of embrace, there's a story in the Bible that we are all pretty familiar with. If not, I will recap. The prodigal son. Okay? If you don't know the story, I'll give a sum up and then read the part of the scripture. Um, I'll read the part of the scripture that applies to this. So there's two sons. One's working hard in the field. The other one says, hey, I want my inheritance a bit sooner to their father. Father goes, all right, you want your inheritance? Here you go. Son's working hard in the field. And the other one, he splurges all his inheritance until there's, he has no other choice but to come back home. And easily the father could have said, I told you this would have happened. Come on in. No, that's not what happened. That's not what the scripture says. In Luke chapter 15, this is the uh, NASB version. It says, so he set out and came to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, father, I have sinned against heaven. And in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf, the fatted calf and slaughter it. And let's eat and celebrate for the son of mine is, is dead. And now has come back to life again, which means he opened his eyes just so you know, he was lost and has been found and they began to celebrate. So in that Example, did the father accept his son or embrace his son? He embraced his son, embraced. And what's the best part of it is the son didn't have to work for it. The son didn't do anything. The son offered because let's face it, we feel guilty. We are the ones that feel guilty. And we're like, I didn't deserve this you know, or, or I, I don't deserve the treatment you're giving me. I'll do whatever I need to do. We beat up on ourselves a lot, a lot. Hello. I do too. Big time. Okay. But he was embraced for who he was. And just like PK mentioned last week, nothing separates us from God's love. Nothing separates us from God's love. So let's talk about other people for a second. We often in our, our uh, I don't want to say, what, what, what am I looking for? Um, vernacular, rhetoric, say we accept someone. You are accepted. We accept you. Cool. <laughs> That's the first step. But we should really learn to embrace someone. And in order to embrace someone is to accept their divine identity. So that's, a, that's other people. Let's learn to embrace other people. Let's talk about ourselves now. This one's hard for a lot of people. Embracing, sometimes embracing other people is a lot easier than embracing ourselves. Let's face it. Let's face it. But what's funny is God embraces us. Just like in this, just like the, the prodigal son, God is the father in that scenario saying, I'm running to you. I embrace you. We're going to kill the fat. We're going to celebrate. That's God on a daily basis. God embraces us. God doesn't accept us. Just accept us. He embraces us. 
And so what we can do is then look through God's eyes at ourselves. And did you know that embracing, embracing someone or yourself is the byproduct of love? In scripture, it says the greatest commandment is love. The greatest of these is love. So embracing is an act of love. So we need to embrace our di uh, divine identity the way that God does. And when we learn to embrace ourselves as well as each other, we are manifesting God. We are manifesting God. Now, I was doing a little research because I was, I was, I called PK. I'm like, what is the word I'm looking for? And I mentioned it earlier. What is the word I'm looking for? Because I'm thinking, okay, character is not what I'm looking for. Personality is not what I'm searching for because then there's nature versus nurture. That's a lot of psychological stuff there. But what is it within us that is naturally and instinctively there? And that is our divine identity. Do we embrace that? Do we truly embrace our identity, our divine identity in God? I know I have to ask myself that a lot. But to embrace is to do it enthusiastically, to embrace who we are. To embrace someone is a manifestation of God. Think about it. How many, how many images? Okay. Think about pictures you've seen that have Jesus or a, a depiction of Jesus or God. Although now that I think about the depictions of Jesus who are white surfer Jesus, but you know what I mean? But the depictions of Jesus, how many of those really speak to us when Jesus is carrying someone? or holding someone or hugging someone or like, wow, that speaks to me because dare I say that it's called a divine embrace, a divine embrace. It speaks to, it speaks to us. It's definitely more impactful when we say that God embraces us or uh, uh, embraces us versus accepts us. And the reason why this message came about is because I know for myself, there were areas of my life that I only accepted, but never truly embraced. And the funny thing is when you learn to ex embrace your divine identity, there's a whole new love that you have for yourself, a whole new acceptance, a whole new embracing that happens. You actually become a better version of yourself better version of God to someone else. And you know, an embrace, yes, we think of a hug, for example, like what Andrew did with me earlier. We think of a hug. That is a very good visual representation of embrace. But let's think for a second, how, how else can we embrace that maybe doesn't require physical touch? Because for example, if you're an introvert, you may not like an embrace <laughs> in that fashion. But think of other ways to embrace. What are some other ways we can embrace people? I mean, you don't have to answer that, but really think about it. What are some other ways you can embrace people? With your words, with your actions. You know, hey, I got, the, I got this meal, don't worry about it. No, I got it, I want to bless you. Or I know for me, when I say love you or love ya, I mean it. I don't just, I, I mean it. I don't just throw around that word. Using your words is a good way. So actions, words, those are other ways you can embrace people. How can I embrace myself? That's a lot of deep digging. <laughs> that requires a lot of deep digging into who you are for you to go, okay, this thing that I really don't like about myself, 
Does it define me? No. Does God define me as friend, as son, daughter, family member, whoever? Does I am God's. I am God's. And another thing, when we realize that God is within us, we are then God to other people. And it's really interesting. I was just thinking about this this morning. We say we accept Jesus into our hearts. I think you guys picked up exactly. I don't think I need to say anymore. <laughs> you picked up on it right away. We accept Jesus. And okay, so I guess I'll accept Jesus because my get out of hell free card. And I'm going to tolerate it. I'm going to tolerate these Christians around me. <laughs> it's true. That's, that's the lingo we use. So my hope is that we transition from accept to embrace. We embrace who someone is. The divine identity is more than gender. Um, Sexual sexuality, um, uh, uh, political status, um, you name it. Divine identity, <laughs> divine identity is who you are and whose you are. That's your divine identity. I found this on the web. Really? <laughs> Siri wants to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, this was something that I was going through in my own journey about embracing who I am. Cause I realized I accepted certain things about myself, but I did not embrace these things about myself. And once I did just a heads up, once you learn to embrace yourself, you learn there's a lot of freedom within that and a lot of love within that. And again, embracing is a byproduct of love. So on that note, I pray that each and every person discover their div divine identity and remember that they are embraced for who they are, not what they've done, but for who they are, Father God. I thank you that people be kinder to themselves because God, you expect, expect nothing from us but to just be. And when we just be, it's a lot easier for us to embrace ourselves. God, I thank you for the example of the prodigal son I thank you that that is a perfect example of your excitement and your desire to embrace us, Father God. Thank you, Father. And there's one more scripture I'd like to read, and I will close with this. It's a very short message. And it is... Romans chapter 15, uh, let's go verse five, six, and seven in the mirror Bible. God's patience and reflection of who we really are transmits in us like-mindedness towards one another according to the pattern of Christ Jesus. The opinion of God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, speaks one global language in us inspired by the same passion. This gives us all the more reason to embrace one another in friendship with the same warmth where Christ embraced us into the welcome of God. Hi. 
I'm Pastor Karen of Oasis of the Valley, and I'm here with Pastor Christine and Dr. John, and we'd like to share something with you. If you don't live in the local area and you'd like to be part of our Oasis Fellowship, we've got a way to connect. We'd like to get to know you personally by video conference calls and telephone calls, and Dr. John will tell you more about how that came about. It was just a few weeks ago, in literally one week's time, I got several emails from people in different parts of the United States and even overseas who were interested in finding a church in their area that's preaching the same powerful message that we are and in the way we are that's quite unique. And unfortunately, I couldn't give them really an answer. I know of a couple of churches and friends that are, are ministering like this, but honestly, there's not too many. And we are truly trying to press forward into a whole new arena in God right now. And uh, what wound up happening was that the thought occurred to me, well, we've got all this amazing technology. Why can't we pastor them with the video conferencing and stuff that you yeah. were talking about and minister into their life? And who knows what God will be able to do through that with enough people who maybe be able to start a church out there. Sounds good. So if you're interested, please click the link below and we'll explain more.